Thank you and uh, hi everyone. I want to say thank you all for joining us today in this class slash webinar talking about photography as a power of force. Photography is for me personally is the best tool to make a difference, to make a change, to help and empower. And it's my favorite topic to, to talk about. So thank you for joining me and thanks for the festival for having me to deliver this message to you all. And I look forward after my presentation to hear your thoughts, your ideas, questions, etc. So please do not hesitate to do that. So I'm now going to share my screen with you to begin the presentation. So once again, thank you for joining me. I'm Mohammed Mohaisen. I'm a Jordanian national who was born in Jerusalem. And as a kid in that part of the world, I didn't have so much uh, choices and chances to act as a kid. The news was everything in my life. It was the morning talk, the evening talk. It's all about what's happening in the region. Um, that definitely changed when I was around nine years old. The moment that I met my grandmother's Polaroid this magical box that when you press a button, a piece of paper comes out documenting that exact moment that we live and we get to keep it with us the rest of our lives. I was fascinated by this camera. I was fascinated by photography. I started to open my eyes and look at the environment surrounding me. I used to see trees. I used to see colors, the landscape, etc. And I had a dream that someday I will be able to capture these colors, share it with the world, and color their world. The environment played a major role in my life. I studied journalism and political science, and I combined my passion for photography with my education in hopes to be a better storyteller, in hopes some days that I'll be able to take pictures and share it with the world and tell them what's happening around them. In 2001, I joined the AP as uh, one of their photographers to, to cover the Israeli-Palestinian conflicts. Shortly after, I became an international photographer covering the region. Um, I started traveling from country to another and in 2003, I was there during the US-led war in Iraq. I was young, unexperienced, and terrified. I was there to show the war, the human misery, and the destruction. I thought being born in a conflict, I know it all. However, I realized that war is the darkest place to be in the middle of. War is a beast. But it was important for me to be there as I believe if something happens and never been documented, it's like simply, it's like it's never occurred. And I wanted to share with the world what's happening around them. Photography, photos are a universal language and through pictures, you share with people what's happening around them. I kept traveling from one country to another. I went to Syria where my heart was broken I went to Yemen where I was stabbed. I went to Afghanistan where I lost my best friend. And I went to Egypt where once I fell in love with that place. However, in the middle of this journey, I realized if the news is in front of me and I just turn around, I will see a different scene, simply a scene full, full of life instead of war. It's like a smile in the middle of the rubble. And this became this, the theme of the work that I've been working mm -hmm. on for over a decade now, as life never stops, life keeps going. And I started simply to focus on that. I'm doing my assignments, I'm covering the conflict, but in different perspective. As we know, there are so many ways to tell a story. And this is the way that I wanted to tell that story that life never stops, lives keep going simply through pictures. I started to focus on children as I personally believe that children are the real victims of conflict. Children all over the world share the same things in common. They seek fun, they seek joy, they seek happiness. And that's what I tried 
to show in my pictures. I, I never ever forget any of the children that I photographed and became known by their photographs. They are part of my life as I am part of theirs. As with my work, I wanted to spread more awareness. I wanted to change stereotypes. And I wanted to raise the voice of the people that are photographed. As we know, these are not only pictures. These are voices. These are messages. And these are testimonies that lives forever. And this is another, the power of photography, that this picture that we capture 10 years ago or now lives forever, lives for the moment, lives for tomorrow, and lives for the coming generation as a witness and documentation to what's happened. So we always have to keep in our mind how important is photography and how important to document this moment. Um, again, I said, I mostly focus with my work on children as they are the real victims of conflict. And among my journey, I met so many children. One of them is a young Afghan refugee girl who I met on the outskirts of Islamabad, Pakistan. She was a very beautiful young girl that I've seen her for the first time in 2010. And I decided in 2014 to portray her and share her story with the world. Laiba Hazrat lives with her family in a mud home on the outskirts of Islamabad. When I portrayed Laiba and her picture went out to the world, I received numerous of emails and messages from people who wanted to help Laiba. So I received gifts and packages and it was so important for me to carry it, locate Laiba and hand it the packages and the gifts. So the, my pictures connected two words and the photographer became the bridge and the messenger. And this is simply one of the reasons I became a photographer to help, but I still didn't reach my goal, what I wanted to reach with my photography. Another story of Zahra Mahmoud. Zahra it has a big part of my life. I met Zahra for the first time in August 2015. It was shortly after she and her family fled the war in Syria and took shelter in neighboring Jordan. When I saw Zahra, she was very quiet, very sad, and you can see the scars of war all over her face. It was very important for me to share her story with the world. As a minor, I seeked her, I, I approached her father, I seeked her permission, his permission to portray her daughter. Zahra's picture was published everywhere, was published in every media platform. She became the face of that war. A year after her picture was awarded UNICEF picture of the, uh, of the year. Unfortunately, not much changed in her life. So I made it my mission. I made it a commitment to keep telling Zahra stories to the world as I believe there is a hope out there and we should never forget that. Up to date, I'm in touch with Zahra. Every year I visit Zahra once or twice just to keep documenting her story and checking on her. For the people who follow me on Instagram, they can see in my story highlight the most recent story, that I, the most recent uh, time that I visited Zahra. Through the years, I've seen Zahra growing in front of my eyes and my lens. Um, and I still believe that through these pictures, one day, someday, we might be able to change her life as there is no better way to make a difference than photography, big or small, at least we start somewhere. In 2015, I stood with my camera on the shores of the Greek island of Lesbos where thousands and thousands of people fled war, poverty, discrimination in search for a new safe home. That year was the year that I decided to do something about it. Not only to be the messenger or the guy who brings simple kindness, but also to commit all of me to the cause of helping those in need simply through photography, my passion. I have seen people who look just like me. I've heard languages that I'm familiar with. I've seen myself my friends, my family, any one of us 
making this dangerous journey on a dinghy just to go and to receive into a safe place. And this is when I decided to create a foundation. I decided to create a nonprofit organization where through photograph, we can make a real difference. Through photography, we document, educate, help and empower refugees, internally displaced people, local communities in different parts of the world, simply through photography. Technology made it possible, you know, and I personally believe that there is nothing impossible if we simply work hard, if we believe in ourselves, and if we follow our hearts. Now, in a second, we can deliver the message from the fields to the doorsteps of people. We can tell them what's happening around them. And I made it my mission to share these stories, these events, and the news with the world simply through these social media, through technology. Nowadays, in 2021, the Everyday Refugees Foundation managed to help thousands of people in different parts of the world simply through photography. So we can see the power of photography, the importance of photography, how we can make a real difference through pictures. Um, I kept traveling and traveling, as you can see here, like how the, 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 the Instagram accounts managed to reach people, managed to deliver messages to hundreds of thousands of people in different parts of the world, simply share with them what's happening around them. Like these are pictures, these are testimonies. Pictures has a full story within it. Sometimes I didn't need to write a caption. This picture tells the whole story, a story of a human being, a story of someone, a story of a mother, a father, a child, etc. And this is what I say always, pictures a day, seven untold story in a week and 30 in a month. So if we all can use these platforms to inform the world, to tell stories, to reach a large number of audience with a theme here, you can help yourself and help others as a, as a photographer through your talent, through your photography. Another story, which is very important that I worked on. In 2017, I became a National Geographic photographer and my first assignment was in January, documenting the unaccompanied un un refugees minor stranded in Serbia. It was a very sad story to tell very difficult circumstances where hundreds of refugees took shelter in abandoned warehouses in Belgrade. It was minus 20 degrees. It was very cold. The circumstances were difficult. They wrapped themselves in blanket. They showered in cold waters. They gathered around fires, inhaling the toxic smoke of these fires. It was a very important story to tell as well as a human being and a photographer, I had a lot of questions. I mean, why would an eight years old walk all the way from Afghanistan to Europe? Or why would a 12 year old boy take shelter in the jungle between the Serbian Croatian border? So many questions I wanted to answer as I believe nobody leaves their home unless they are forced to leave their homes. And that's where my picture comes answering these questions simply by opening people's hearts and making them curious to understand that behind the word refugees or internally displaced person, there are people who are forced to leave their homes and hopes, memories and dreams behind and go search for a new safe place. These questions helps us to remember at the end of the day, we are all humans. And as a human being, it is my responsibility to help when I can. And here I decided to help through pictures and these pictures reach the world and people approach me wanting to help, wanting to make a real difference. And that's the power of photography. I remember a year after the story was published in National Geographic, I came back to Greece, but this time I came, uh, sorry, I came back to Serbia, but this time I came with a team from Everyday Refugees Foundation to check on the children that I met earlier in that year, as well to deliver help. We handed these children 
proper footwear. We handed them warm clothes. And here I completed my mission as a photographer and a human being. And I made a difference simply through photography. The foundation became a very important mission for me that as a photographer, I have a goal that through pictures, I can really help. I can change stereotype. I can spread awareness. I can raise voices. Why not take this, this passion that I have into a direction to help people? The most recent project we're working on with the foundation is about education, a better future, where we managed to help five schools in Pakistan for Afghan refugee girls. Education is a better future. With education, we managed to provide a better future for a child and their families. And that's simply through photography. On the side, with my assignment, with, my, with the foundation, etc., whatever I travel around the world, I have my camera with me. I carry my camera and I capture a picture that shows the beauty of our world. I, I show this beautiful environment. I spread awareness how beautiful is this planet through pictures that go out and open people's eyes. It changes stereotypes of specific places, etc. cetera. Um, because for me, a picture is meant to help and empower, especially in 2020 during the pandemic, these photographs while I'm traveling managed to please people, managed to bring a smile into people's hearts. And here the feedback came to me that I, couldn't, I can't travel right now and see this beautiful moon, full moon rising above Mount Sunyong, you know? So your picture made me travel. Again, this is another element of the power of photography. I would like now to show you a quick slideshow about pictures, street photography, daily life images that I capture simply when I'm not on assignments.
消。This was a, a presentation about the work that I do, where I travel, what I do, the vision that I have as a photojournalist, as a photographer, as a human being. There are a few things that I would like to talk with you about and, and about how to approach people, how to make a difference, how to follow the right path in your career as a young photographer, as someone who wants to expand, who wants to reach clients, etc. Photography is all about capturing moments in time. These moments, we capture it for a reason and a purpose, as I mentioned earlier, to, to put it out to the world and inform them, to, to help and empower, to spread awareness, to change stereotypes, and most important to raise the voice of the people that we photograph. As, as I said, it's not just a picture, it's a message, it's a voice, it's a testimony that lives forever. So there is ethics behind every picture that we take. There is credibility. Uh, the information that I collect are always accurate. The people that are photographed, they're aware that I'm photographing them. I spend a lot of time in the same environment as we know, people, when they trust you, you simply carry their voice and image to the world. So that's why I always spend enough time in one environment. I become part of that landscape. I become invisible and I do my best to gain people trust and respect as that's the key, the key to success. We don't just pass by and take picture. We spend time, we invest and we aim to make a difference big or small at least we start somewhere keep that in the back of your head photography there are so many kinds of photography and here i showed you my travel photography i showed you my photojournalism i did conflict photography i do portrait this is where you as a photographer you realize what you want to do what you are good in for me a picture that doesn't have enough emotion, it did not succeed totally. So always spend time to capture these pure emotions simply to make people think, to make people curious, to make people realize the story behind this picture. And this is the key to success in every picture that the time and the energy and the effort as a photographer that I spent in capturing this picture reflects within this picture and give justice to the person that I photograph, give uh, justice to her and to him, to an adult or a child, to a place even. When I'm traveling and I'm capturing picture about the place, I, I put in the back of my head give justice to the beauty of this place, spread more awareness. And that's something very important you need to keep in the back of your head. Always as a photojournalist, remember to keep communicating with colleagues, with other photographers. Don't be shy to ask, don't be shy to approach whenever you need help as one hand doesn't clap. We're both together, we can help each other. If I am a young photographer, I don't know how to edit. I don't know how to build a portfolio. I will always reach out to someone that I look up to, to a senior photographer and say, can you kindly help me looking up at my portfolio, look out at this story? How can I do it better? There is no shame in approaching people that I look up to because again, when I look at my own work, it's almost difficult to edit it. It's always good to approach someone that I believe in who can help me. That's a very important. And I believe this is the best way to, to expand, the best way to learn. Knowledge never stops. We learn every day. I learn from you. You learn from me. And again, we all are gifted as a photographers and we should use this gift, this passion for a good cause. Aim to make a difference, big or small, at least have this point to start at a certain point somewhere. And again, it's not 100 meter, it's a marathon. You have to keep going and going and going. And remember every day there is a new thing to learn. Remember there is many stories around us that 
I don't need to travel sometimes to the end of the world to come up with a story. A story could be exactly in my doorsteps. There is no better way to tell a story than being part of it. Remember that. Tell your own story. That's the best way to show the story from the depth of its root. I remember in 2015, I wanted to show the, the, the refugee crisis. So I walked with the family all the way from Greece to Germany, as this was the only way for me to show what this family passes through. So always challenge yourself, always learn. And remember, every mistake is a chance to learn, is a chance to, 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 to go higher. Mistakes for me, every challenge is a step to grow, not to be backwarded, but to go forward and Photography is passion before a job. So it's something built in. The more you feel it, the more you practice, the more you believe in it, the more you reach your goal. Thank you very much. I, I will be happy to hear questions, to hear your comments, concerns, etc. Okay, thank you, Mohammed. Uh... Yes, for now, we don't have any questions on the Q&A section. Don't know if anybody wants to raise, your, raise their hands or make a question. For now, not in the Q&A, not in the chat. It's a, it's a great chance when, I, when I'm talking to a photographer who, for example, I believe in or I like her work or his work to take this opportunity to get my questions answered, if it's not now through an email, et cetera. So here we are. If I have any question here, I would not hesitate to ask him. Okay, here is Teresa Nunes asking, hi, could you explain us a little further how to get involved in Everyday Refugees Foundation? Thank you. Thank you very much, Teresa. This is a very, is a great question. I mean, Getting involved for me starts by believing in a cause, believing in the power of photography. As I mean, Everyday Refugees Foundation is a Dutch nonprofit. We're based in Amsterdam and we have a full operation between several countries. Among them is Greece and Europe. And in the Netherlands, we have a project. So simply please visit the website www.everydayrefugees.org or reach us through our social media. The foundation exists in all the social media platform and just write an email, mention how exactly you want to get involved. You can get involved as a photographer. You can get involved as a volunteer. You can get involved in so many ways. And we welcome anybody who wants to help and make a difference. So thank you for your interest in getting involved. Just please approach us, send us exactly how you see yourself getting involved and we will be more than happy to come back to you with the proper answers and a plan how we can make this happen. Okay, uh, so yeah, we don't have any, any more questions for now. We have a bit of time, so do you yourself have any question? No, um, I don't have any question. Ah, here is João Paulo Guadalhumal. First of all, congrats for your excellent work. Dealing with photography, dealing with photographing kids isn't easy, especially nowadays, but, but in, in the case of being refugees do you find any obstacles in taking the chance of shooting them especially from their parents or relatives thank you very much joao this is another important question i want to i mentioned briefly about the ethics of photography and especially when we're dealing with minors it's very important to have a consent form it's very important to approach the parents and have their permission through a consent form, through a written form or orally recorded, or at least their clear permission. 
you know, in my case, I usually spend a lot of time in the same environment. Let's say if I'm working on refugee camps or in tented settlements or anywhere in the world, I don't just pass by. I spend a lot of time. First of all, I introduce myself indirectly by just walking around with my camera so people realize that there is a photographer. So in this way, I can see who's interested and who's not interested. We can always feel the person who's really have issues in being photographed. I always approach people. However, there are moments, spontaneous moments, that if I miss it, it never comes back. But as I mentioned, I spend a lot of time, I do my best to work on, do my homework, where I'm going. If I'm going to a place where it's not recommended to photograph women, I don't photograph women. I do a bit of homework. I learn a little bit about that language. I worked four years and a half in Pakistan around, around the Afghan community there. I never spoke the language. They never spoke my language, but I had few words to show people that I did learn a bit about the culture, about their language, about their do or don't, what's bidden and what's forbidden, you know? So it's always nice to welcome people in their own language. And this is the key for me is respect. I spend time, I work hard to gain the people trust and I always seek permission. And for example, whenever I work for a story for National Geographic, we need forms. If it's a minor or it's an adult, I approach people, I introduce myself, I explain to them what exactly I'm working on. And some people might say, look, I'm sorry, I don't want to do that. So simply for me, that picture never happened. But most of the people in my case, they never reject or say no, because I simply explain to them what I'm doing, explain to them who I am, explain to them sometimes that their picture could reach over 160 million people. They have no problem as long as you're honest, credibility, authenticity, and ethics. You have always to remember that picture is a very powerful tool. And if someone doesn't want to be photographed, it's not ethically allowed to go and show their pictures. So sp simply spend time, learn a little bit of background about the people you're photographing. And that that's the key. That's really the key to have no problem working in any environment just with respect. Thank you. So Roderick Juraman from Indonesia, he asks, what should be done to get our photos published on Nat Geo? Um, working with National Geographic is not impossible. It's not something, I mean, everybody wishes to work for National Geographic. I had to work 15 years before, work hard. I traveled everywhere. I made a name. I made my work obvious and available. All you have to do is work hard, find the proper stories, find the right stories. You're not only a photographer nowadays. You have to be a photographer. You have to be a writer. And sometimes you have to create these videos and you have to keep approaching editors. Our pictures don't get featured. We publish them. If we're talking about social media, we drop our pictures on social media as National Geographic photographer. But to get your story published with National Geographic, you have to work on a, on a story. You have to do this story. You have to begin a story at least and approach one of National Geographic editors and say, I have this story and I would like to show it to you. And remember, there is a proper way to approach editors all over the world. I would not send simply a note through Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. I would try to find the person's email. Let's say Mohammed Mohaisen is an editor in The Guardian or New York Times or National Geographic, and I wish to show him or her my story. I will have to find a way to approach him or her in the proper way through an email, introduce myself, send a better background of what I'm working on, and hear the reply back and approach him. That's the right way. There is nothing impossible, as I mentioned earlier, if you work hard, if you believe in yourself, and if you follow your heart. All you have to do is find the right stories that matter. Sometimes the story, again, is right in front of your door, and you need to approach the editor and do your best to show it to them. And don't give up. Sometimes people are busy. Sometimes people are traveling. I would not just stop approaching people if I don't simply get an answer. You need to keep approaching people hoping to get an answer and approach them the proper way, especially with National Geographic or anywhere else. 
Thank you. So from Carmen Cerejo or Cerejo, I'm not sure. Firstly, I would like to thank you for, the, for your excellent presentation. I'm a beginner in photography, photojournalism, and I would like you to tell me how is your approach to, reign, to a range of human rights, for example, refugees, especially how long it takes to get people's trust. Uh, thank you, Carmen. It's very important that we remember trust is not something we buy or sell. Trust is something we earn. And how we earn it, we earn it by respect. Again, when I'm working in any environment, wherever I am in the world, I do my homework. I exactly study where I'm going. I try to understand the culture of the people, the tradition, etc. And then when I go, I don't just go check check. I go and I spend a bit of time. If sometimes I don't have the luxury that I can spend four or five days, but at least I don't just jump in and I start taking pictures of people without telling these people what I'm doing. And sometimes you don't need to talk to explain to people. It's all about a gesture or a positive energy. Sometimes a small gesture when I'm walking in, like saying hello, or if I'm in Afghanistan or Pakistan, say, Salaamu Alaikum, it opens doors. Remember that, that you need to tell people who you are without talking with my camera, especially working with children, working with refugees, working with difficult stories. These people sometimes, they don't have a voice and you are their voice, but you need to be sensitive in approaching these people. Not, we're not, we're a human being at the end of the day. I always tell myself, if I am in the other side of the camera, how would I feel if I exposed my camera in the front of him or her? So always put yourself in the other person's shoes. That's a good step to earn people's trust and respect, that they know that you are feeling them. Put yourself in their place. Imagine how would you feel if you're in the other hand. I, I would approach people with sensitivity, with kindness. I introduce myself. If I don't speak the language, there is a universal language. It's called kindness and respect. Use that language. I promise you there is no door will be shut in the front of your face or window. Spend time, just go and spend time because you will not be able to show the, the daily life and the challenges that people face if you don't spend time and it will appear in your pictures. I spent four years and a half in one environment. And when I left, I felt I didn't give enough time. Can you imagine that? But that's an extreme example. But sometimes I go, I spend the full week, I spend three days. If I have the access, if I'm permitted to enter this camp or this environment, and I take advantage of it, not immediately by jumping, by introducing myself and spending enough time around that environment, because you want to become part of that landscape. You want people to stop seeing you to become invisible and how you become invisible by spending enough time. Thank you. From Vanya Sepulveda. Hello, first of all, congrats on your work. You've been doing this job for a long time now. How do you cope with sometimes dealing with such sad stories? As observers, people usually think about the photos they see for a couple of minutes and then sadly they move on with their lives but you get in touch with people you hear them and absorb this their stories and carry and carry them with you every day how do you cope with those emotions and how does it impact your life and work it's a, thank you it's a very nice question i mean at the end of the day i always remind myself that i'm lucky i'm blessed because I'm, I'm, in the, I'm the opposite of most of the people that are photographed as I have a home and it's the opposite of most of the people. I have a home, I have a bed, I have a roof to sleep under and I have warm clothes and warm meal to have at the end of my hard day. It's the opposite of most of the people that are photographed. I remind myself how lucky I am to be healthy, to be safe and not to be in the other side of the camera, but also 
I believe in the power of photography and making a difference and changing the people's lives. So if you remember why I'm taking this picture on the first place, it eases your life. But, but also I'm a human being. I have my ups and downs moment that I have to deal with it. There was a couple of situations throughout my career for the last 20 years where I had a tough period coping with. I lost uh, my best friend in Afghanistan. It wasn't easy. So I felt I took distance from my camera. I felt disconnected. But remembering why I'm doing this, it made me stronger. Photography is the best tool to make a difference, to change someone's life and to help other human beings. And I always do my best to keep positive. I always do my best to remain safe. Safety is priority. And I always, always do my best to remember, as I said, why I'm doing this. And that's what keeps me sane and positive. Okay, thank you. Uh, for now, we don't have more questions. Um, about, I mean, again, photography is all about capturing moments in time. So as a photographer, I don't just pass by. I really spend time. You really need to spend time. If you want your stories and your pictures to be seen all over the world, to be published everywhere, you have to spend enough time and energy working on these story in your own way, in your own style. And that's what's going to make this story powerful, this story strong. Invest, spend time, learn, do your homework. Don't take things for granted. And just keep in mind that Every day I learn something new. Every day in my personal experience as myself, I look at what people are doing, what other photographers are doing, and I try to learn. I try to, to, to expand my knowledge as this is the thing that never stops, keep going. Technology is like a train that moves so fast. And you, have, you better be side by side with it or you're going to spend your life trying to catch up. Another aspect of technology, social media. Right now, social media is a very powerful tool to show what's happening. So if, if, if I'm talking about Instagram, because it deals with pictures, it, it's, it's, you, you, you technically communicate with, you, with the word through your pictures and we're photographers here. So I would make this tool as my portfolio. I would make this tool as the place where I share my word. It's like a wire. You know, I show my talent, I show the stories that I work on, I show the depth and the time that I spend. So take advantage of this technology to, to reach, to reach, to, to reach editors. Remember, everybody is on these social media. If I have a nice story and I want it, I want it to go out there, you know, Remember, there might be an important editor sitting in your account and you don't know who's that person watching these stories and watching these pictures who could approach you and say, I'm interested in this picture, I'm interested in this story, how we can work about it. So keep these tools as, as, as your portfolio, as your wire to show your talent, to show your pictures. So simply just keep working, keep capturing pictures, keep making mistakes and learn from these mistakes and approach people you look up to that they might be able to help you, that they might be able to guide you. We all need guidance. We all need help. Uh, nobody is in the top. I always say every achievement that comes my way is just the beginning for another challenge. You see? So keep on, keep on, keep on. Thank you. Okay, we have a few more questions from Teresa Nunes. Were you on assignment on Afghanistan when you lost your friend? Did you get psychological support from your company? Um, yes, I did actually. I mean, I, we were in Afghanistan and I had, I had the, some kind of a hit. I had a breakdown and I had the proper help. I did therapy for uh, several months and it helped me actually. But this is something very important we need to talk about. Like, 
if I'm going to work in hostile environment or in war zones, I really need to be prepared. I need, I really need to know where I'm going. There is hostile environment trainings out there that I need to do. And there is many organizations right now that could help freelancers, independent photographers, even amateur photographers. So always try to understand where I'm going, why I'm going and who can I, can, can I approach to be safe as safety is priority. Again, many organizations are out there to help photographers, photojournalists, journalists, videographer, etc. If they're going into such environment, I was lucky enough to have a company behind me to help me to, to help me at least express it and share it and put it out there because you would be amazed in 2003 and four when I was in Iraq, I didn't realize that I had something trapped inside me that went out 10 years after. So it took 10 years for me to process an earlier shock. So that's something very important is to express and talk. If it's not for a therapist, I could express it to a friend. Just don't keep it inside, put it out because everything gets reflected through your pictures. Thank you. I'm gonna let uh, Teresa talk. Hi. Um, hi. Thank you uh, for this talk. And well, I guess it's easier to actually talk instead of just writing and waiting for an yeah. answer. So uh, on this, on this um, conflict zone photography, do you, what's your opinion on freelancers going just to try their luck? Because well, last year uh, on this on these webinars, we had uh, João Silva. Um, um, and he, he told us that he wasn't really, uh, he, he didn't really agree on having freelancers going just to try their luck because actually it's a very dangerous environment as we all know. Um, so trying to see if you get a picture and maybe you can sell it, it's probably not the best option. So I was wondering what's your op op opinion on that? Um, thank you. That's a very, thank very you. important question. It's a very important topic. You know, 15 years ago and 20 years ago, the only way for me to be noticed or to have my work published is to go to a war zone. I had to go to Iraq. I had to go here and there just to be noticed and to have my work seen. And this is my, my personal opinion. There are many, many, many important stories that we need to cover if these conflicts and these uh, uh, wars, etc., doesn't get covered, nobody would see it. Nobody would know what's going on out there. So there is important, but there is something very important that I need to keep in the back of my head is my safety. Safety is priority. And nowadays, and trust me with that, the story is right in front of you. There are many stories around it. I no longer need to go somewhere if it's dangerous or not dangerous, just to be noticed or heard or have my work published. And I mean it, there's so many opportunities, wherever you are in the world. All you need is to have your talent, to have your camera, to capture these stories and believe in it and work hard on it. But if I happened, I have to go to war zone. I have to go work there. I would do my homework before I go and jump to Afghanistan or Syria or wherever. I would try to approach agencies i would try to approach in newspapers i would try to approach other colleagues other photographers in that area and say look i'm thinking of coming to afghanistan how how is the situation where can i stay what can i do but there is something very important what i know about war as a photojournalist what's my experience war is a very dark place we don't just jump into war and hope i would come up with a nice picture i do my homework if there is any trainings, I would take these trainings. To go to war, you need to have all these protective gear, for example. If I'm a freelancer or independent, I can't afford buying these stuff. So I have to study this thing very carefully. You know, if, if you don't come back with uh, safe and alive, nobody would see these pictures. Nobody would see these stories. These pictures will not go anywhere. So always remember with your safety. And again, remember we're in 2021, the, the, the mark that, Everything changed. The whole industry is kind of different. I'm no longer just a photographer nowadays. I do pictures. I do my text. I do videos. I do multimedia. And 
the story sometimes is right there next to me. But if I have to go to these hostile environments, you better be prepared. You better be ready and aware where you're stepping in. I would contact everybody that I know and I don't know. I just approach them and say, I'm planning to come. I was, how is it nowadays? There are organizations. One of the organization, the International Women Media Foundation in DC right now, they deal with a lot of program. If you are a female photojournalist, you know, you can simply approach them and say, I would like to, to apply to one of your programs. And they have been doing great work, you know? So always think of everything before going. And it's, it's not just throwing myself in the fire on the front of the cannon. I have to think very carefully where I'm going. And if I'm passionate enough, I would just open my eyes to the environment surrounding me and try to come up with the stories from there. Thank you. Did I, did I answer your question? The yeah. Way you want? Yeah, for sure. Just, uh, just out of, it's not actually out of curiosity. It's just to, to get clear. Is it, is it or isn't mandatory to have that uh, special training before you go to a conflict zone? I mean, back in the day, I, I had to do the hostile environment training and I did it twice, mm -hmm. you see? Um, I mean, I don't know exactly how it is nowadays, but for your own safety and for, for also many, many organizations, they would ask you, did you do this training? But uh, but as an independent photographer, if I don't have enough resources, I will not be able to do it. But I will try to do my best to find ways. So it's very important for your own safety to do it. Because sometimes if I'm approaching an ag agency, that question might not come and say, did you do the training? You see what I mean? And it takes you and it takes you. So no, for your own safety, you have to do it before you go and into any of these environments. I would have to do my help. I, uh, my, uh, my insurance, etc. Think of all of that. It's very important. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you don't have more questions, Teresa? Uh, not right now, I guess. Okay. Thank you. So uh, I, I'm actually looking at the questions. I uh, think we have a question from Antonio. Antonio, exactly. Regarding the gear, Antonio, it depends on the story that I'm working on. It depends on where I am. And personally, I, I'd like to be as light as possible. I have my camera. I have a couple of lenses. I usually do a lot of street photography, daily life. I do a lot of portraits and I work a lot in refugee camps. So my, I have my body, I have my 35 millimeter and I have my 50. I don't like to work heavy. I like to be as light as possible. But again, it depends on your assignment. For example, whenever I can, I do a full moon just to please myself and the people who love to see this beautiful picture. I borrow a 600 millimeter lens and it's not my favorite lens. It's very heavy, but according to the assignment, according to the picture that I want to capture. We, a few years back, I was asked by National Geographic Travel, like if a traveler want to travel and take pictures, what would you advise them? I said, travel as light as possible because when you're light, you can just move easily, you can travel easily, and you don't have to worry about the heavy gear and equipment. Um, Sorry, I do have another question and I've written it on the, on the Q&A uh, because you were talking about the Instagram being um, a, sp uh, um, a good tool for a portfolio. And I was wondering if you think it's more important to have a carefully curated Instagram feed um, than a website or we should have both or what's your opinion on that? Thank, Thank you. you. It's very important to have a website that present me. I don't know if you are an independent photographer or you work regularly with somebody, but a website is very important because I, when I want to look at someone's work, the first thing I do, I try to go to their websites to find a proper email, proper introduction, read a bit about them. Your Instagram right now is simply your reflection to the world. 
Um, I know from editors that I know that whenever there is an incident somewhere or they're interested in a picture in some region in the world, what they do, they try to go quickly to people's Instagram. Let's say there is something happening in Berlin right now, an event, and they want picture. Sometimes they just try to find out who is in Berlin right now. Hashtag Berlin, hashtag photography, something, something. So here Instagram became a very quick tool for clients for potential clients for you as a photographer but it's my presentation i go through my social media very carefully i only present the work that i do and sometimes behind the scene of the work that i do for people to understand what it takes to capture this picture uh, you can say for me it's all about informing it's all about sharing the stories and it's all about spreading awareness so the stories that i'm working on when it's published, I share it so I don't burn it in advance. You know, if there is a very important story of a person, of a child, of etc., I just put it out there for the people to react. I approach it really carefully. I approach it with, you know, as it is my portfolio. It is, this is what I'm working on, guys. Take a look. I'm, I get a lot of requests from clients from talks from this from that simply through my instagram because again it's easily approachable people can easily come through your instagram but definitely i need a proper website that give justice to me as as a photojournalist and give justice to the stories that i'm working on it's like a platform so it's a combination of both always present yourself the way you see yourself should be presented. Remember, this is a, just an outside layer that I come to it. And sometimes I can judge you according to this, which is not fair, but this is the current reality that I need to handle very carefully. I need to feed it. I need to keep it going. I need to expand it and I need to use it in the right way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so what's the next cause that should be aware of happening? The world doesn't have enough word attention. I, whenever I, there is many stories that I don't see enough media attention or something. This is when I go and I keep trying to highlight it. It's not 100 meter, it's a marathon. There are things you need to keep pushing, trying, pushing, trying, and never stop. Never stop. It's a marathon. I wouldn't give up on the first no that I take. I keep going. And that's one of the reasons I decided to establish a foundation. So I keep this going. I'm a photojournalist. I capture pictures. I write stories. And I try to find the platform to put it out today. And I keep pushing it, telling it. Just like the story of young Zahra I met in 2015. And up to date, I keep telling her story as I didn't give up. I keep going. I, there is a hope out there and I never stop believing in that. You need to be really persistent. You need to believe in what you do and keep pushing it till you reach your goal. Are you done the care for the campus? No, again, there is a yes, it's your question. It's a balance between both, but uh, the website is very important. Um, if there was moments that I wanted to give up photography, um, there was one moment, as I mentioned, where I lost my best friend, Anya Nethering House, one of the finest photographers and people and person and a human being that I met. I had a very dark period, but actually, again, photography and my camera what pulled me up and made me want to do more. Your grandma, how important was your family? I mean, family is very important to me. Having my family's support was very important. I used to go to conflict zone and I still go once in a while. I'm well aware where I'm stepping in. Uh, my, if I get unlucky, I might never be able to come back. So it was very important for me that my family are aware. They know what I'm in. And once in a while, I used to call them and mention, I am here, I am there. Um, there is a joke I always say, a few years back, I called my mom and I said, mom, I'm in Cabo. She told me have fun. I don't think she heard it properly that I'm in Cabo. Maybe she thought I'm in Switzerland. So she answered me, have fun. So 
that was very important for me that at least I have her blessing. So it's important to keep the ones we love aware. And sometimes I used to hide here and there, but support of the family is the most important thing for me. Okay, thank you. If nobody has more questions, I think you can finish. I'm very happy with your questions. I'm very happy that I had the opportunity to share with you my journey in photography. I started from zero, but I worked hard on myself. It's a marathon. It wasn't a hundred meter and still a marathon. Thank you for all your questions. And I have a couple of advice for everybody. Always try to seek guidance. Always try to approach people that you look up to. One hand doesn't clap. Don't be shy and be polite when you approach people. The other thing, take this gift that you have and passion about photography into a direction to help others in making a difference through this gift that you have. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank you, Mohammed. I'm going to close the room for everyone. We talk Thank later. You. Thank you. Thank you very much.